say congratulations tonight um, for the nomination oh, that that's, you're having. That, that's just already fabulous. You know, <laughs> to, that's already to even be in um, part of this big community and that uh, honors the book and the script, I think, is just a wonderful thing. Um, because the story, it's the whole story, you know, since the very start until, you know, the end, which is the film. And it's nice to have that kind of inclusiveness and to have that, um, that recognition. Yeah. You know, that's collaborative recognition. Yeah. So, so, t so tell, tell us the process when you were writing the book, um, you know, because you did a lot of research yes. into this. Yes, I did. So I, um, I actually was in the Memorial de Caen. It was a museum near the Lanting Beaches of um, Normandy, a World War II museum. And so that's what I was doing a lot of the research because I wanted to research the younger folk, the Hitler youth, <laughs> all the events like Kristallnacht that had happened. And so I had the resources with me. I had lots of um, books that were there. And it was a very emotional thing because while I was writing, they had a, um, above me, there was a Hawker Typhoon plane. Yeah. And every five minutes, the bomber soundtrack went off. Sorry. And then even when I saw the film and I heard, you know, that kind of soundtrack, oh, wow. bur, 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 it brought me back to those five years because for five years I had bombers overhead. So little by little, what I wanted to do is I wanted to entwine the history to the story. So you have the individual, how the individual or a small family on a domestic scale is um, um, affected by war and everything that was happening. And also how on a collective scale how does the collective and the individual work together how do we stay individuals when there's some kind of mass movement um does it matter one individual you know to stand up as a uh, rose Witta does as a resistant does one person make a difference yeah. and you know i wanted to explore so many different things so that was the right place to do it and um but it took a long time because i had to get the history and at the end it was almost like a um treasure hunt i had 200 questions and i had just some questions you can't find in books uh, was the post office open on Saturday I needed to know that for part of it yeah. and um, what coins were they using back at the time so I had to find people who were alive who could tell me this detail exactly what were you eating how does it work these tickets when you go to buy food what's the black market like you know who exactly are you dealing with because you hear of it but you don't really know where do you meet them you know yeah. what are they like so I had to find lots of mostly elderly people which was very you know very interesting in itself so that, that's very extensive. So when Waititi uh, approached you to uh, adapt it into uh, Jojo Rabbit, what, w what was your reaction and how much involvement you had? Okay, well, the first thing I did when I got the email that he wanted to make it a film, I thought to myself, hmm, because this was definitely my baby. So before I considered, I actually went to watch his movies. So I saw two of his short films, which were wonderful. And then I went, he had a, um, a film in the theater at the time called Boy, and I went to see that too. And after I saw that, I said, okay, we're of the same artistic family. He leans a little more to comedy and I a little more to drama, but I felt we're the same. Um, we like that fine balance between yeah. the two. And I thought he's right. I can really trust someone with this. We went to meet and he already had a very clear idea of what he wanted to do. And he explains to me what parts he was um, interested in because we knew if he took the whole book, you know, it would take 15 episodes on TV and yeah. neither of us wanted to, that, to do that. So he said, this is the part he would focus on and then we just talked about sometimes details for example he said Johannes would have the scar but he, um, he couldn't be defigured because you know he still wanted the audience to engage with him and we just went over you know different uh, different um, individual concerns like that and then we talked about how he was going to adapt it which he did and um, he worked very very hard on it and uh, he sent me what he wrote and I loved it. You know, I was just reading and I'm laughing and I'm crying and I thought this is wonderful. I saw everything that was the same and I saw the kind of notes he put in it, but I didn't feel like it was a thread. I felt he was putting his humor, his love, his own personal touches. And I had always told him the book's mine. That will never change. Make this film yours. Um, my big fear, and that's what I also told him at that first meeting, was a lot of people take a book and then they take a voice off and then they take parts of the book that are too long the voice yeah. off and there's been so many books I loved and I've gone to see the film and I can't make it beyond 20 minutes because it's just boring so though they if you're too exact to the book you lose something you lose the essence and it just it doesn't work it's a completely different medium and it's got to come alive in its own medium so when I read this I I felt I had something very special um 
though it did take a lot longer, even at that stage. I thought once we had that, I, I thought um, it would be done quite quickly. Interestingly, though, we were initially thinking of doing it in New Zealand with a very small budget, and I was imagining myself um, helping to cook and helping to watch out, you know, look after the children and probably babysit. Yeah. So to tell you the truth, after Thor, when he was going to do it, and it was such a big budget, I was happy, but I felt a little bit sad because I thought, oh, it had been something more like a community and a family, and suddenly now it's become something so big. But then when they came and I saw the film, I thought to myself, oh, you know, to get that kind of beautiful film with all the means, it, it just, it was meant to be that it happened that way. And I'm so um, glad and grateful that it did happen, you know, with that he was able to have such beautiful cinematography and such beautiful colors and uniform and... Mm -hmm. Um, All right, guys, look right here. It was better than expected because it's obviously your baby and you loved it. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, it was just, it, it's also had such a huge outreach, you know, beyond what I ever could have imagined. So that too has been uh, very touching. Touching to see that the story, the book itself had gone from country to country. So I remember when it went first to South Korea or it would go to Serbia or... Uh, um, when the Hungarian translation was ready and I realized that it's going to countries a lot of time where there's some kind of um, disaccord or where there's uh, political pressure and I was always touched to think the story means something to people who are from a completely different culture and who don't speak the same language and to see the film now which has gone in even more languages than the you know than the book I thought people then really allow the story to resonate with them it's it's an excellent movie and and, and you you wrote an excellent book congratulations once more thank you for speaking oh, thank with you me. so much thank you thank, thank you. you appreciate it